I became interested in canine, uh, I would say probably within a couple years of being uh, a deputy with the sheriff's office. I've always kind of been fascinated with dogs, even as a little kid. I was assigned to the um, interdiction unit with the sheriff's office. Um, we worked primarily Interstate 75, where we did drug investigations, contraband investigations. While in that position, I was asked if I would be interested in taking a dog. Um, and I eagerly said yes. And within probably six months, I was sent over to Palm Beach, Florida, where I was given my first dog, Canine Bandit. When you get a, a, a canine partner, it's, it's a change, and you grow with your canine. Tom Sweeney, been with the uh, Clark County Sheriff's Office canine unit now for going on 13 plus years. I'm uh, currently partnered with my third canine, Canine Rexo. He was a dual purpose patrol and explosives canine. I originally started out in the gang unit with a single purpose drug dog, Matsu, and then I transitioned from single purpose narcotics work to dual purpose patrol with my second partner, Canine Boss, who was a patrol narcotics dog. My name is John Poling. I'm a lieutenant with the Collier County Sheriff's Office Canine Unit. I'm currently assigned K9 Renzo, who is an explosive detection canine. I've been a canine handler since 2006. I'm on my third dog. My first dog was K9 Doyle. My second dog was K9 Sandy. And my third dog is K9 Renzo. Some of the functions of the K9 unit include narcotics detection, explosives detection, and patrol functions. I believe K9 units are invaluable to all law enforcement agencies. K9 units provide an additional safety mechanism for the patrol function. Canines are utilized to clear buildings, clear areas that cannot be gained access by patrol or canine members. Additionally, canines make it safer for deputies or officers to locate suspects, uh, maybe out in the field in the woods or during a felony stop. I started my career in uh, law enforcement back in, uh, in 1996 when I was in the United States Marine Corps. 1998 is when I started my canine career. Uh, I was a military police canine handler, uh, working with the military working dogs. Uh, did that for about 10 years. And then after that, I got out of the United States Marine Corps. And then I also I trained dogs for explosives and went overseas to Iraq and Afghanistan after that effect. I uh, spent two years in Iraq and Afghanistan in total. And then I applied here with the Collier County Sheriff's Office. Law enforcement canine has, has been a completely different aspect. Uh, since doing it for 10 years in the United States Marine Corps, I thought I had a, uh, an idea of what I was getting myself into, but uh, once I dove into it, I realized that I was in a whole different world. The, the work ethic, uh, the commitment is second to none in law enforcement. Uh, our dogs have to listen to us. They have to go out there and find somebody. They have to go out there and protect not only law enforcement, but they also have to protect the community aspect of it as well. All right, primarily today, uh, once we start going on this, we're gonna have all the dogs out. When the dogs do come out, they need to be put on muzzle, all right? Uh, depending on how things how things roll, you'll go up, you'll shoot a magazine, you'll come back, either reload, and expose you to um, shooting with your gas mask on. It started years ago when I lived up in, in Massachusetts. Um, one of my best friend's neighbors was a canine handler. Um, you know, seeing the dog, seeing what he did, um, hearing his stories, and then another close friend of mine's dad was a canine guy. And I just thought it was one of those things that was really cool, something that, you know, maybe one day I could do. And then when I came to the sheriff's office here, I saw the posting, um, I put in for it. Public relations in canine is very important. Um, we do a lot of public demonstrations uh, where we're out in the community. 
Um, and we do a lot of explaining on what we really use police dogs for. There's a big misconception that, you know, again, all, all we do is go out and bite people. And, and that's really the furthest. Um, that's just so far from, from the truth. We use our dog for their sense of smell. Um, that's their, their element or their, their forte with us. Okay, he's on foot now, and he's just jumped the fence near, I think it's going to be the restaurant there. What's the name of it? Kelly's. What is it? Kelly's Fish House. He's running by Kelly's Fish House, guys. Alright, it's no longer 31 Victor, 31 Papa now. That's affirmative. He's running out onto some boat docks. He is now hiding on a boat, and he has jumped into the canal. Alright, let's get units in the area setting up a perimeter here. And, uh, yeah, come on down by Kelly's. Just keep coming south, and we'll try and keep, uh, keep an eye out for you. Uh, Alright, can I go west from where you're at? Come around the gazebo, and to your right. Yeah, we got him, we got him. Roger. 10-3 traffic, 10-3 traffic. Oh, yeah. That's three on one and three. Maple Feet holding at somebody in a boat by Kelly's Fish House. Training is is something that as a as a canine handler and being in the canine unit you're going to do a lot of. We just did a three-day training session uh, with our aviation unit, just working, getting the dogs into our Huey, flying around, landing, just seeing, make sure that there's no issues with any of the dogs. And, you know, it's one of those things that we always try to prepare for. You never know if you're gonna get called out um, to the middle of Everglades. And you, there is no place to, to drive out there, so you've gotta be airlifted out there. Um, so if we have to go out and do a search for a suspect or, you know, a lost person, we've already accomplished the, the, the main hurdle of how are we going to get out there because we're, we're trained going in the uh, uh, helicopter. Being in South Florida, we come across a lot of water. So we also went through um, our parks department and we exposed the dogs to a lot of water bites. Um, just getting the dogs, letting them have fun, running through the water and going after the decoy. Because again, that's, that's something that we could encounter on a, on a day-to-day -day operation. The handler being with the dog. Um, if the dog was wet, the handler's wet. It, it, it's a team. And it's very important that people realize we are a team. If my partner's going in, I'm, I'm going in right behind him. Our dogs serve several different functions within the sheriff's office. Narcotics has uh, an investigation they need assistance with, as well as members of patrol. Um, they might have somebody that's a little shady on a traffic stop. They think there might be narcotics in the vehicle. They'll call for us. We can do a, an examination with uh, the canine. We also do a lot of dignitary work. So we have explosives detection canines. So celebrities or whether they're government officials, we generally get called. We work with our EOD members and we make sure that the public and that individual is safe when they come here. 1973 was offered the opportunity to go to canine school. I was approached by one of the supervisors here and at the time we had no dogs. Uh, well, we had a bloodhound uh, that they just used for tracking but they had no uh, apprehension dogs or you know traditional police dogs if you will. I started canine school at the time Fort Myers PD was running a canine school. My dog excelled in building searches in what we call area searches. So we graduated, uh, worked the street with him till 1975, uh, worked many cases. I was the only canine officer again in the department. I was on call 24-7 1973 to 1975 is when I was actually on the street with, with my dog Baron. When I was promoted to CID, there was another dog, a Doberman by the name of Conrad. His handler was Dennis McDaniel and he replaced me out on the street. The average 
lifespan of a dog, it, it, it seems to have, it's gotten a lot longer than it used to be. Um, generally, we can work a dog five, six years, um, and that's overall health, not, you know, granted that the dog doesn't sustain any type of uh, blunt trauma or, or any type of injury. And when we retire a dog, you have the opportunity to adopt the dog, which everyone in the unit has done. Um, it, it's, it's a bond, it's just, this guy was here for me for a long time. You know, my, my former partner passed in uh, September, it was actually September 29th. It was tough because you, it was like a piece of you had just passed. I, I know people are close, with their pets, and, and but a police dog is a little bit different. I spent more time with him than I than I think I did my wife and my my son. Um, you know, day in and day out of, of going to work every day. You know, when an animal passes, it's a, it's a sad thing. But I look at it as take what they taught us and put that into another animal, and um, and that's. You know, that's how you move on. You know, you have that dog 24-7 at your house, both off-duty, on-duty. He becomes part of the family. Uh, he's your best friend. Come to work together every day on a new adventure. You never know what, what, what's going to happen. I love working with a, with a canine. I love having a partner with me. Every day is, is a different day. Working with canines has been the most satisfying part of my career in law enforcement. The canine partners are always happy to see you. They're excited to go to work and they're willing to do whatever's needed. One of the best tours I ever had was as a canine deputy. I highly recommend anyone that's interested in becoming a canine deputy and, and take a hard look at it because it, it's really, really good, satisfying duty.